What's up, everybody? This is Johnny Basement, and we're back here in the basement for another, yet another cricket video. Before we get into this, subscribe, bell notice, like button, drop your comments down below where you'll find the link to this video in the comments down below. We also, my daughter and I, have gotten back on our basement squad where we do music reviews of all types of music, all genres. Anything you got, including for you Australians, John Farnham, Cold Chisel. We've done things like that as well in the past. So check out that is Basement Squad. I'll leave the link for that. And I started a Twitch account, so look for that as well, where I do gaming online. I do it with my family with the basketball, shooting games, Call of Duty, Destiny, whatever. Twitch, I'll leave that in the link below. Now before we get into this, you guys are so passionate about your cricket and your footy. The last video I did on the great catches by the fielders in cricket, a lot of you guys knocked me because, and if you hadn't seen it, pull it up, watch the whole video, but around the 10 minute 40 second mark, watch from there, you will see me critique and call this particular play, boo, a downer on there. Now the guy I'm a sports fan. Let me tell you something how it works in the basement here. If I see something that I don't like, I'm going to say I don't like it. Other reactors on YouTube will sit there and try to kiss ass and say, hey, these were all great plays or something. I'm not going to do that. I'm a sports fan. I know what a technically good play is. So the guy behind the catcher, right, in the slips, is that correct? If it's not, we'll find out in this video today. But anyway, you guys that did see the video, you know what I'm talking about. For him to run across and the awareness of where the ball is going to be bowled and landing. So him running across and being aware and technically on point. That makes it a great catch. But when you make a great catch video, you want to see guys that are flying, sacrificing their bodies, spread across the field fully stretched out, making amazing catches. Not technically good catches. I'm a huge hockey fan. I can show you a goalie, the greatest goalie saves of all time, and the guys are out here and they're sacrificing their bodies, and they're doing this, and they're making saves like that, and they're full spread out. Those are amazing saves. I can show you a technically good save by a goalie, because he was aware if there's a two guys on a breakaway, let's say, and a pass of the buck back and forth, back and forth. The goalie sits there and anticipates which guy is going to shoot the puck. So he can sit there and turn and catch it. No fantastic moves, no spread out, no full splits. Just technically it was a great catch because he knew to be here instead of here. So it didn't go over his shoulder into the net. Boom. I don't want to see that on the greatest goalie catches of all time and greatest goalie saves. That's technically a good catch. So the people that here that wanted to rip me for saying that that catch behind and that he was aware and technically he knew and I want to see a baseball player do that and you guys aren't this and that and whatever else. If your feelings are hurt, too bad. It was a boring catch catch. It was great on the awareness and the technical part, but it was boring for uh, greatest catches in cricket. The guys that were fully spread out and sacrificing their bodies, that's a catch. Technically good catches should not be in there. Just like I said for the sport that I love, goalies, that should not be in there. A guy that knew where to be and caught the puck that's coming at him 95 to 100 miles an hour. He knew to be here, but he didn't do the all everything else. You understand now? That's how it works in the basement. I'm always going to bring it real, and I appreciate the passion you guys have for your sport. I like it, too. I'm getting into it, too. But I am a diehard sports fan. Football, basketball, baseball, hockey, and now footy. So now cricket's coming along. So now you guys know where I stand. I'm always going to bring it real. So you can keep your comments coming because I love them. I read them all. Let's get into this now. Cricket Explained, if you already know baseball, a lot of you guys were telling me that I should watch this as well. So let's see. Let's check it out. It's kind of a lengthy video, so let's see, see how we do on this. Let's go. Explained, if you already know baseball. All right. To get this started, I want you to imagine a game much like baseball, except there are only two bases, and they're basically where home plate is 
and where the pitcher's mound is. To score a run in this game, you simply have to reach the next base. So if you put the ball in play and you make it to the pitcher's mound, that's a run. And then if you're able to make it back to home plate, then you score two runs on that play. This game is played. Now, thanks to a lot of you guys that have given me incredible comments. I actually know that now because of you guys. You guys helped me out tremendously with this. We're good now. We're good now. We understand where each other are. The people that have been following me a long time know where we stand. Know where we stand on that. So uh, we get it now. We're all good, right? So let's keep it moving. Because that I understand now thanks to a lot of you guys that have been very helpful to me. In the middle of an oval, so there's no foul area. You can hit the ball behind you. You can hit it to the side or whatever. And in this game, the pitchers are allowed to bounce the ball. If you can picture this game in your mind, you are 75% of the way to understanding cricket. The rest of it is details. Before we get started, I just want to say that I'm going to be explaining this like I would to a friend of mine who knows baseball and wants to know about cricket. I'm probably going to be switching between baseball and cricket terminology a little bit more freely than maybe somebody who's a hardcore cricket fan might be comfortable with. Feel free to correct me in the comments, but what might be more fun is if you By the way, a companion. This is the basement mascot. This is Rocco. He's 13 years old. He's got arthritis, but he does really well back here. So if you hear him in the background, he's got his bone now, and he's trying to lay down. He's a great, great, great. A lot of you guys know Rocco, the basement mascot. That's who this is, if you don't know. He's on my live streams a lot. I live stream a lot of Rangers and Knicks games, uh, Yankees, Jets, whatever. We do them on here. Rocco is a big part of it. He gets his jerseys on, and that's what we do here in the basement. <clears throat> so now you guys know that's Rocco. In video that explains baseball in reverse. All right, let's get started. Basic gameplay. So cricket is a game played between two teams of 11 players. When a team is fielding, all 11 of its players are on the field at the same time. Nine players are out in the field at the various positions. And then there's one bowler, who is basically the pitcher, and one wicketkeeper, who is basically the catcher. And then the team that is batting has two players at bat at any given time. These batters stand at opposite ends of the pitch, which is a narrow rectangle that's in the middle of the oval that is the cricket field. At the ends of the pitch are two wickets, which are these little structures that have three stumps and two bales. The stumps are the three pieces of wood that are in the ground, and the bales are these two little pieces of wood that rest on top of the stumps. A play begins when the bowler, which is basically the pitcher, bowls the ball to the batter. The bowler is ultimately trying to break the wicket, which would get the batter out, and more on that later. The batter is trying to protect the wicket and put the ball in play. If the ball is put in play and the batter and the teammate are able to switch places, so basically assume the other one's position, the team has scored a run. And if they can do that again, then they score two. And if they can do that again, they score three, etc. There are no strikes in cricket. The batter can just choose not to swing if they don't want to. And there's no penalty for hitting a batter with a legally thrown ball. Batters are expected to protect the wicket and not let themselves get hit. In fact, as we'll see in a little bit, there are actually situations where a batter can be called out if they allow themselves to be hit. The bowler definitely has a major advantage over a baseball pitcher because you can hit the batter. You can throw right at him. Trust me, baseball pitchers throw right at a batter, but that's usually to pay him back for their other team's pitcher hitting our batter. So it's kind of like an unwritten rule that that's what you do. Because we only work with a box from your knees to your chest. You got to land the ball somewhere in that area. So, And you know what? This is really cool because this here gives the bowler a whole wide variety of doing whatever he wants. Well, not whatever he wants to do, but it gives him a wide variety of fooling the batter and trying to hit those wickets. I, I, I get a lot of this. Again, thank you for your comments. I read them all, and I appreciate them because they are helpful. Now it's starting to make sense. It was the ball. There is the equivalent of a ball in cricket. It's called a wide. And if the umpire has determined that the bowler has bowled the ball wide, one run is awarded to the batting team. There's also something in cricket called a no ball, which is when the umpire has determined that the ball has been delivered illegally. And there's a couple dozen different reasons why an umpire might call a no ball. If the umpire calls a no ball, 
Just like a wow, wide. Wow, that's a lot. One run is awarded to the batting team. In cricket, the batters stay on the field until they are out. So they continue to bat and score runs until they are put out. This means that just like in baseball, a batter can be out with one single swing of the bat, or they can stay at bat, I guess, I guess forever. But it's common for a batter to score between like 20 and 50 runs in an at-bat, and it's not unheard of for a batter to hit 100. This is called the century, and it's very fun. That's what made Maxwell's 200 so amazing, especially with the leg cramps. Yes, guys, I read your comments and realized through the comments that he actually did that with a lot of leg cramps and a lot of issues, man. So that makes that even more amazing. And in a situation where, in baseball terms, I guess it'd be like if there was one out in the ninth inning, two outs in the ninth inning, and that team was down by nine runs, and they actually find a way to get that without getting an out. That's all, It's nearly impossible with nobody on base. The boundary. Along the perimeter of the cricket field is the boundary. This can be a rope or a little cushion type thing, or it could be a short fence or a wall. When a ball is put in play and it reaches or goes past the boundary, that is called a boundary. A ball that rolls and hits or passes the boundary or bounces over the boundary like a ground rule double is worth four runs for the batting team. Wow. A ball that is hit Oh, And for those that don't know, a ground rule double is if the ball goes to the outfield in baseball, hits in the field, and then bounces over the wall. The, the batter's only awarded second base. A ground rule double goes to second base. Now, if there's people on base, someone on first, they go to third. They're on second, they go home. So everybody gets to move up two bases. Over the boundary, so basically like a home run, is worth six runs for the batting team. Wow, that's a lot. Outs. There are several ways that a batter or runner can get put out in cricket, and they boil down to two basic categories. A batter can be caught out, which is just like baseball. They hit a ball in the air and the fielder catches it. Or they can be out if the fielding team knocks the bales off the stumps of the wicket when you are in a position where that could put you out. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You can actually hit the wicket before he gets there and that's, a, and that's an out. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that one. There's a few different ways this could happen. You could be run out. This is where you are trying to score a run, but they knock the ball into the wicket before you reach the crease that defines the place where you are safe. By the way, the bat is part of your body. That's it. Determining whether or not you are safe. It's a good aim, too. You can be bowled out, and these are very exciting. This is where the bowler sends the ball to you, and the ball bounces past you and knocks the bales off the stumps. A batter can also be put out by the wicket keeper. If the batter moves past this line here called the popping crease, oh. and the wicket keeper gains possession of the ball and knocks the bales off the stumps. It's like a batter's box in baseball where the batter stands. You can't, can't go out of that. Oh, that's cool. Oops. This All is right. called being stumped out. A batter can also be called out if they allow the ball to hit them and the umpire determines that the ball would have knocked the bales off the stumps if the batter had not interfered with their body. This is called a leg before wicket. So those are the most common ways that you will see a batter or runner get put out by the Wow, that's interesting because in baseball, a batter, if they're up, if they're up and a pitch and a pitcher's pitching inside, they usually do that to back the batter off the base so they can pitch the next one away from them. So they try to intimidate him with the ball, but sometimes a batter will be here and then they'll lean in. They'll lean their body in to get hit and they're awarded first base. And you know they did that. There's no penalty for that the fielding team. Wow, there that's are interesting. That's other a, um, much less common ways for a batter. So it's basically subjective in here. That's cool. Better to get out, and we will not be getting into them here. One major difference between baseball and cricket is in cricket, if the fielding team thinks they have gotten a batter or runner out, they first have to appeal to the umpire who will confirm whether or not the batter or runner is out. So if a batter or runner would be out, but no one on the fielding team notices it, then play just continues and the umpire will not just like call them out. When a player is put out, the bowling and fielding team is said to have taken the wicket and the batting and running team is said to have lost the wicket. Overs. Each series of six pitches or deliveries, which are called balls, is called an over. 
Each over has only one bowler, and each bowler only bowls one over at a time. So after a bowler has delivered six balls, they take a position in the field, and another player comes in to be the bowler for the next over. A bowler can field for an over and then come back to bowl again, but a bowler may not bowl two consecutive overs. If you're comparing this all to baseball, overs are similar to individual at-bats in terms of the flow of the game, right? It's like one series of deliveries that everyone's watching, and then there's a brief pause while a new player comes on, and then there's a next set of deliveries that everyone's watching. The difference, of course, is that it's the, the bowlers, the pitchers that are coming in and out, and not the batters. Format. See, that's funny because when I did, and yes, I admitted I was ignorant when I did the baseball versus cricket video. That was the second cricket video I did. I admit the ignorance I had in that. But when guys came to me and told me that the baseball pitcher's arm can't, wouldn't be as strong as a bowler's, dude, baseball pitches have a minimum before they're even thought about taking out of 100 pitches, unless they're getting shellacked and everybody's hitting them all over the field to be taken out before that. But their arms go over 100 pitches. 100 pitches, not six. So it's funny because when people take shots at me or at the sport, you're showing how much you don't know about the sport like I didn't know when I was taking shots at cricket, okay? I didn't know and I admitted it. You guys don't know when you're taking shots over here. It's funny because a starting pitcher for baseball does 100 pitches, 100. Oh, it's crazy, but it's true. 100 if they're pitching great. If not, then they bring in a relief pitcher. They don't throw a few of them and then go out in the field. It doesn't work like that. Once they're out, they're out. So get people that want to take little shots like that, look up what you're saying before you say it. I did, and I don't, you don't hear me saying things like that anymore. Let's keep it moving. Beyond everything that has been explained so far, the majority of the details of the game that you watch will depend on the format of cricket that you're watching. There are two basic formats of the game of cricket. There's first-class cricket, and there's limited overs cricket. First-class cricket is what a lot of people think of when they think of cricket. We're talking about the games that go on for several days. Everyone is wearing white. Maybe the queen shows up. And first class cricket is most associated with the five days. Rocco's going to join us matches. for the rest of the video, guys. International He's going to join us for the rest of the video. Manager. They're scheduled for five days, but they might be completed before that. At the beginning of the first, first day, there's a coin toss to determine which team days. goes first. And then the sides alternate going through their entire batting order. This happens twice. So each team goes through its batting order twice for a total of four innings. Unless the team that goes second scores more runs than the team that went first, in which case they don't have to actually finish their entire innings. They just win. What do you guys prefer? Because I hear a lot and I've read a lot on these test matches, these five days test matches, and I've read a lot on the... Uh... You know, the T20 matches, what do you guys prefer to watch? What is, the, what is the more popular one to watch? Let me know. I meant to ask that in the last video. Win the game. That was very simplified. The rules governing test matches could be their own 15-minute video. The other format of cricket is limited overs cricket, where each team is limited to a certain number of overs, and each innings comes to an end when the specified number of overs has been reached, or when all of the batters are out, whichever comes first. There are several types of limited overs cricket, but there are two that you are most likely to see. The first of these are the One Day Internationals, or ODI. These are played between national teams, and each team has 50 overs. And then there's also T20 cricket, which is 2020 cricket, where both teams get only 20 overs. This style of cricket was invented to be more exciting and more fast. So that's a maximum of 120 deliveries per innings. How many bowlers would that be? Let me back it up just in case you might have said it already. That's why I'm not talking a lot during this one. I'm listening. I'm listening because I like to talk a lot during these videos. So I'm listening. Let me back that up. Between national teams and each team has 50 overs. And then there's also T20 cricket, which is 2020 cricket, where both teams get only 20 overs. This style of cricket was invented to be more exciting and more fast paced and to put the length of an individual match around the same as other common sporting events around the world. An easy way to know whether you're watching a test match or a limited overs match is whether the teams are wearing white or colors. And if you are watching a professional match, you're almost definitely watching a T20 match.
Scorekeeping. So professional matches are T20 only. They don't do that for the five-day matches. Five-day matches are not professionals. Did I hear that right? All right. Pay attention because this is maybe the most confusing part of all of this. The scorekeeping. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see it says India, and it says 118 for five. This does not mean that the score is 118 runs to five runs. No, I did that. I thought that when we first did this. I thought that. I was like, wow, it is one team that is sorry. Well, I, I did that in the beginning. Five. This does not mean that the score is 118 runs to five runs. No, this means that India has scored 118 runs for five wickets, which means that five of their batters have been put out. Then it says first innings. So this is the first innings of this match. Then it says England 287. So that's how many runs England scored in their innings. And since this is a test match, both teams will play two innings. Then you've got information about the two batsmen that are currently up and how many runs they've scored. I know so Cole far. is a good batter. I did a piece on him. It says Broad 0 for 24. This means that Broad, the bowler, has taken zero wickets so far and has allowed 24 runs. And then the 15 o'clock over there, that's just the time of the day, it's 3 p.m. Now for a limited overs match, there's a little bit more information that you need to know. So here you go. Down at the bottom it says England. This is another game between England and India. It's a women's game. So it says England 103 for four. So that means that they've scored 103 runs for four wickets. P2, don't worry about what that means yet. Then it says, 24.3 of 50. That means that we are 24 overs and three deliveries into this innings. And then the 50 means that this innings will have at most 50 overs, right? Because this is a one day international. Then it says target 222. This means that India went first and scored 222 runs. So that's how many runs England has to score to win. And from there, it's pretty much the same as the test match we just saw. Just be careful, because if you're watching an Australian broadcast, the scores are reversed. The oh. wickets are first, and the runs are second. So on this one, it well, says that, Ren. That's the I mean, that would be obvious, right, at that point, that the, the wickets would be first. I mean, if you know it by now, I would even know that now. Maybe in the beginning, I wouldn't have, but now I would. Renegades, that's a, one of the teams. Five for 135. So it's five wickets for 135 runs. So just be careful, it might be confusing. Some final similarities and differences. All right, that's basically it. I thought that we would end this video with a few more similarities and differences between baseball and cricket. One major difference is that in cricket, if a ball is in play, the runners are not compelled to move, right? You only run if you think you can make a run. One similarity is that every cricket ground has different dimensions and a different shape. And much like in baseball, this means that certain cricket grounds are more favorable or less favorable to different play styles. Another difference. That's interesting. If you imagine, I couldn't imagine in baseball if a batter grounds out to the shortstop knowing 99% of the time, meaning if there isn't a bad throw to first base, that they're going to be out. That would be amazing if they're like, nah. I'm not going to run on that one. I, I That's cool. I actually like that. You give it, It's up to the batter if he wants to run or not. And in different fields, that's the same as baseball. There are different design fields. Some people have a deeper outfield. Some have a closer outfield. Some are favorable to left-handed batters than right-handed batters. So it, it's interesting. It's very interesting. The sport is actually really cool. I like this. The difference is that in cricket, the positions refer to places on the field and not necessarily the individual fielders. So if baseball had a similar thing, like you would not be the shortstop for your team. You would just be a fielder who would be playing, be the shortstop for fun. The individual fielders. So if baseball had a similar thing, like... This is a great play. This is a great play. Now he's, he's sacrificing his body, going back to my main point in the beginning. I don't want to see him just get the ground ball and throw it. I mean, he's got to grab, get that ball, get up, and whip it to first base before the batsmen get there. Some of these guys are fast. So that's a great play. I don't want to see the guy just catch a little bouncer and then throw it. Technically, it's a good play, but this was a great play. Like, you would not be the shortstop for your team. You would just be a fielder who would be playing shortstop position. And then if your team was in a shift or whatever, maybe you would be said that you were in the second base position. Or maybe for one batter, you would be in the... That's what I was talking about when I was telling you guys about pull hitters. All those guys are over there because he is a pull 
hitter. His tendency is to go exactly where everybody is. You can't do that anymore, by the way. That was taken away this past season. You can't do all that anymore. So George Springer, Bregman, and Carlos Correa, see where the second base is? They would, all three of those guys would have to be as on the other side of second base. They'd have to be at least there. So a lot of batters know how to play. We were talking about this. Hit them where they ain't. If this batter could do that, he would hit it way over there where they're not. That's, that's the same as a batsman in cricket. Hit it where they ain't. And this guy is 99% pull hitter, so that's why they roll the dice and everybody stands over there. To me, you just you could drop a bunt down and just let it roll up the line. That's it. That's Shallow it. mid outfield position. Brett. Or maybe for one batter, you would be in the shallow mid outfield position, right? Another similarity is that in cricket, players on field and off the field behavior is governed by an old fashioned sense of propriety that's not unlike the unwritten rules in baseball. And the final difference that's probably become clear to you as you watch this video is that cricket is a much more international game than baseball. I don't mean to say that it is more popular in more countries than baseball, although this might also be true. What I mean by this is that international competitions, so competitions between national teams are the norm. They're not like a special thing that everyone tunes into every four years. Professional cricket is a relatively new phenomenon. Which is the World Baseball Classic, by the way. You tune into that every four years where the United States plays against Japan or uh, Dominican Republic, Venezuela, you got it. Things like that where everybody, Italy, they all have their teams lined up and they all play against each other. Canada, that's every four years. It's called the World Baseball Classic thing that everyone tunes into every four years. Professional cricket is a relatively new phenomenon in the world. And while leagues are becoming much more popular these days, it wasn't very long ago that professional cricket was looked upon as diluting the purity of the game. All right, baseball fan, you have just become a cricket master and you are ready to watch any cricket game that comes across your television. If you are a cricket fan and you notice that I got something wrong, which I probably have, or that I left something out, which I probably did, feel free to let me know in the comments. Although, like I said before, it might be more fun for you to just make your own companion video. I would love to watch a video where an actual lifelong cricket fan tries to explain cricket for baseball fans or tries to explain baseball for cricket fans. That's interesting. For base an actual... Guys, that was awesome. That was very well detailed and explained. That was a really good one. The other one I watched way back when I did the uh, cricket versus baseball and all the things I did in the beginning, um, I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea what was going on. It was a horrible, horrible explanation video. This was awesome. This explanation video broke it down. And again, a lot of the people that have the great comments that I get, which is more than the bad, way more than the bad, the great comments that I get, I read them, and it made sense in here. It made a lot of sense in here, like like getting the, the wickets and the bails and, and the batter can't move into the pitch. I didn't know that. There are a couple of people that explain this to me and the boundaries and, and the six runs and the four runs, and guys can just keep going until they get out. I only thought you could catch out. I didn't know you could get the ball and beat the runner by throwing it to the wicket before he gets to it. That was interesting. I didn't know that either. So again, guys, when you come to see my videos, you are in the basement. And I will rip on my own sports as much as I'll rip on another one when there's something on there that I don't like. I'm going to say it. Technically great. Technically, you know, Johnny on the spot videos, they should make them separate from great catches. Don't put them in great catches videos. That's where bodies are sacrificed, people are going all out, reckless abandon, no holds barred. That's what we want to see when I see greatest catches, greatest saves, greatest slam dunks, greatest whatever. That's what I want to see. Guys, as, all, as always, thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for the promotion you guys give me. Thank you for the comments you guys give me. Subscribe, bell notice, like button. Look for my links, Basement Squad, my daughter and I, separate channel of mine, Basement Squad. Twitch. All the links will be in the video down below, including this one will be in the video down below. Thank you so much from me and Rocco. Rocco and I say goodbye. We'll see you on the next video. Hit that uh, bell notice too. 
because you'll see me on live and you can talk to me right in the chat because I do it with all the other regular people that show up there. Johnny Basement, he's Rocco, and we are out.